Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God, our Heavenly Father, and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Our text is this rather mm, unique passage from Daniel, chapter 12, verses 1 through 3. At that time shall arise Michael, any name with an E-L in it is an especially beautiful name because E-L means is God. So Michael is... Uh, means uh, who is as great as God. Rachel, E-L, Lamb of God. I don't know all these, but there are, there's a myriad of names with E-L. And if you have a name with E-L in it, you have a very Christian name. Sam, help me out. Ezekiel, hmm? Laurel, maybe. Maybe it doesn't sound real Hebrew, but it might be. I just said E-L. Nathaniel. Thank you. You get the idea. So whenever you hear that name, the, the E-L in it is um, God in it. And so this guy, at that time shall arise Michael, the great prince who is charge of your people, us. And there shall be a time of trouble such as never has been seen before. There was a nation till that time, hence the boxes. There's going to, in this life, they're already crashing down, Right? Divorce, lost your job, flunked the test, didn't make the team, illness. But there will come a time when all of them will come crashing down. It's the time of the year we talk about these things. Okay? But at that time, your people shall be delivered. Everyone whose name shall be found written in the book of the life. Your name is in the book of life. Literally. When you were baptized, we wrote it in the book. And God wrote it in his book. So keep it there. Wanting to, to write it with permanent ink. None of this washable stuff. The book of life. And many of those who sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake. Right? The graveyards shall awake. Uh, some to everlasting life and some to shame and everlasting contempt. And those who are wise shall shine like the brightness of the sky above, and those who turn many to righteousness like the stars forever and ever. So back to this Michael guy in a minute, but let's talk about the tribulation first. The tribulation. I'm going to take you back to December 26th, the day after Christmas, 2004. It's called Boxing Day. It's just a footnote in Canada and the United Kingdom. Not boxing, but I thought it was boxing. Why are they boxing the day after Christmas? But it's not. They make boxes of food and treats, and they have the Christmas spirit extend Christmas, I guess, by sharing these boxes. But it was on Boxing Day 2004 when news came across the wires there was a great earthquake in the Indian Ocean. In the Indian Ocean. I did some reading about this. This natural disaster kind of fascinates me. I remember hearing the news flashes on the radio. It was a Sunday, and we had finished Christmas Eve, Christmas Day, and Boxing Day church Sunday, and we got in the car, the four of us, and we were on a trip. And it was uh, magnetizing the news that a great earthquake, it lasted up to 10 minutes. They found out, this is in the Indian Ocean, they found out that it was the third, lar uh, they think it was the third largest earthquake ever on record, and they found out it was so great, it moved the planet a half an inch. That's a big quake. The real story, as you know, is since it happened in the ocean, it produced movement in the water, and what used to be called tidal waves, now called a tsunami, and there was a tsunami. To get to the bad part first, the tsunami moved throughout the Indian Ocean and killed up to 280,000 people. It moved onto some uh, oceanfront villages a mile and a half. It is not peculiar to a tsunami or a tidal wave coming where the ocean recedes first. It's called the disappearing sea. So earthquake, water moves, tsunami on the way, but before that happens, the ocean recedes. In a lot of these resorts throughout the Indian Ocean, beachcombers, who should have been in church, had to get that in there, 
<laughs> they were on the oh, they go, look, we can go way out here. And they would pick up coral and they would see uh, interesting fish and they would kind of gloat in the fact that they had these beautiful souvenirs, we'll call them. Unknown to them that death was on the way. Some people started noticing out on the horizon a white line. It extended all the way across the horizon. This wasn't where the waves broke. This was further past that, a white line. And they would ask, what is it? What is it? The Indian Ocean does not have a tsunami system. I think if you go to San Diego here, I've noticed here on the West Coast that uh, down by the beach there are tsunami signs. It'll say tsunami area. The Pacific Ocean has a tsunami system, but in 2004, they put one in since, in 2006, a tsunami security or alarm system. But in 2004, there was none. Nevertheless, the people, some had heard about the earthquake, and no people paid any attention, even when the white line came. What is it? There is Denny's in the new from oral tradition that when the sea receded and when the earth trembled, trembled, they better get up to higher ground. But modern people didn't know that and they didn't pay attention. And the white line became closer and closer and higher and higher. And measurements indicate that some of the waves were 30 feet tall, which would be what, a couple stories? And of course, this was fatal to the people who were having a picnic walking out into the disappearing sea. Now, this is the time of year it's kind of hard to preach on because the Bible says we're in for a tsunami. We're but the Bible is an alarm system. It lets us know that this white line of trouble is coming. And features of this white line is tribulation. Things aren't going to go well. Haven't we seen that this week? Now, I'm not going to get up here and give a political commentary or a social commentary on what happened Friday night. But as a reader of the Bible, you say to yourself, the tsunami is close. And the ultimate tsunami is not just problems here, wars, people fighting each other, natural disasters, those will happen, but it'll also be spiritual. And that's the worst part about it, is that the old evil foe, defeated, wants to take down everybody he can. Reminds me of Moby Dick, right? Moby, I can't remember. The first line is, called me Ishmael, but I thought the captain's name was Ahab. But somewhere in the book, somebody gets wrapped up in all the harpoons and the ropes around Moby Dick and drags him down to the depths of the sea. You are, Jesus says, his target. The devil has been defeated, but he ain't going to go alone. So what are we going to do? First of all, we're going to do what the Bible cautions us to do, and that's not to go astray. To listen to others who say, I am Jesus. I am your Savior. Hmm? Lean on money. You'll get through it. Lean on my uh, doctrine. Hmm? Jesus is old hat. Let's try a new gospel. Things like that. You want to stay away from that. Jesus is your protector as well as your Savior. And in Daniel chapter 12, it talks about this guy named Michael. Some think he's an angel. He could be. Angels protect us. That's why all the references to angels this morning. He shall give his angels charge over thee to protect thee in all thy ways. Ask God for angelic protection for your for your problems, huh? when you travel especially. When I, when I travel, especially on a plane, I'm real greedy. I ask for six legions of angels. 
I figure God has enough, and I do. I just I do that. If I'm too greedy, I'll ask for forgiveness. But I ask for six legions. Let's say there's ten thousand a legion. I want a legion in front of the plane, a legion behind the plane, a legion to the left of the plane, a legion to the right of the plane, a ten thousand angels above the plane, and the strongest ten thousand below the plane. <laughs> huh? They're there. They're there. Angels help. Are they not all ministering sp spirits? They say. Angels are to protect you and me. So take advantage of that and ask the Lord for angelic protection. Surgery, you know, whatever it is. Ask for that. But there's this guy, Michael, and he sounds kind of special. And some think he's an angel, an archangel. But if you read the Bible closely, he sounds a lot like Jesus. He sounds a lot like Jesus because before the creation of the world, Michael defeated Satan in heaven and cast him to the earth where he creates this Moby Dick kind of chaos. Hmm. And in Revelation it says this Michael will come back and rescue his people as well as it says in Daniel. Hmm. And it sounds, like, it sounds like the guy who was in the fiery furnace. Remember Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? And then another one who looked like a human. It sounds like Jesus. It sounds like the angel who rescued with Jacob and then blessed Jacob. He sounds like Jesus. And in the text elsewhere it says, not Michael an angel, but Michael the prince of angels. So the bottom line is we have a protector. Jesus promises protection from the tsunami. And I don't want to be an alarmist, but the Bible backs me up on this. Things are going to get worse. And the devil is the old enemy is called a dragon in Revelation. And when Michael defeats him, he impales the dragon. What Jesus did on, on the cross, he impaled Satan. Jesus was impaled, but for only three days. He impales our enemy, and the victory is ours. So Jesus is our protector. I think St. Michael is Jesus. He's the one who protects us. Oh, I was going to say, um, it's going to get worse in the church. Already has. Have you noticed that? People bailing out of church. The uh, society, even the government, said, you can't have a nativity scene. Mm -hmm. You can't do that. You can't pray in school. The old enemy, he's thrashing around, trying to, make, trying to bring down as many as possible. So the, good, the bad news is this morning is a tsunami is coming. It's already started. It's going to get worse. It's going to get really worse in the church. He's going to assail you individually to try to get you to separate yourself from God's family astray from some novel teaching which isn't of Jesus. The good news is Michael, the prince of angels, Jesus, will protect you. Go to him every time you feel assailed. Go to him when you don't feel assailed. Go to him when something happens bad on the other side of the world and when something bad happens in your home, he protects you. And when you come back next week, you'll hear one more time about, about God protecting us is good news. And there's some accessories to it. I'm giving you a little kind of preview. Accessories to what we could do to help ourselves. You know, when you buy a new dress, the smart sales clerk will go, your husband Tom won't be there. Okay, but the clerk said, that dress looks really nice on you. Don't you think you need a new pair of shoes? That's why Tom can't be there. Because Tom would say no. But the sales clerk said, look at these pair of shoes. Accessories. Okay. And it says, don't you think you need a new necklace? Oh, yes, of course. And don't you think you need a new hat? Don't look at me that way. <laughs> Accessories. So next week when you come back, same bad news, especially for the church, same good news. He, Jesus, Michael, the Father, will keep you from stumbling. And a few hints about what we can do to accessorize our walk 
until we get to heaven. I hope the good news out trumps the bad news. It really does. Jesus, Prince of Angels, your protector. Amen. And the peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in these troubled days on the Lord Jesus, on Michael, the pre-incarnate Christ. Let's think on the pre-incarnate. You know, Jesus lived. Jesus existed before Bethlehem and he exists after the Mount of the Ascension. Jesus always has been. So, Keep your minds on that eternal Jesus until life everlasting. Amen. Having heard the word of God.